CTV Channel 6 is proud to present the Roundtable. What's happening in the city, what's going to be coming up in the city. Roundtable gives us a chance to sit down with some celebrities, public officials, people who are important to the community. In my fifth term. Yeah, yeah. It worked out. Five and a half months as the sheriff. We were a public agency. We needed a program where we could have a little more in-depth time find out more about them, who they are, what they're doing, find out what their thoughts are, and let you have a chance to get to know them a little better. Welcome to another edition of The Roundtable. My name is Paul Dingaman, host this program, which appears Marine City, St. Clair, all over St. Clair County. We are glad to have you joining us today. We are continuing our efforts on this program to give you a little more in-depth uh, reports on things that are happening in the uh, St. Clair, Blue Water, Marine City areas, and that uh, is why we have the chairman of the Board of, of uh, County Commissioners, Mr. Jeff Bohm, and the mayor of the uh, city of St. Clair, Mr. Bill Cedar, with us today. Gentlemen, Jeff, nice to see you. Yeah, Welcome Paul, back thanks for having Hands. us. Always Your Honor, you. nice to see you, sir. Always yeah. a pleasure. There's been a front page story this last couple of weeks or so uh, about uh, St. Clair and things that are happening, so I thought we better get you in here. Something about uh, M29, something about a courtyard. Where do we all begin? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you've read a lot of uh, articles recently on some of the different things that are happening in, uh, happening here in St. Clair. And it probably um, really the um, redo of the center courtyard mm -hmm. in the mall um, that's been recently noted. Uh, the city of St. Clair has a sizable set aside for the community foundation. Um, which is going to essentially produce funding for a long time for a lot of different projects. And they have certain priority projects that they have on their list in the courtyard, um, along with some improvements in Palmer Park and St. Clair Inn, some things with M29 to really work on the mm. connectivity and kind of the redo of the downtown uh, development district there in St. Clair. And the project in the center courtyard is happening. It is moving forward. And there was really a lot of um, talks and workshops and things like that as far as revisiting the M29 uh, corridor project. We went to city council the other night and presented um, a little bit on the county's end. Mm -hmm. And the reason the county, and I had a chart the other night that talked about why the county would probably make a lot of sense to be able to be the um, clearinghouse, so to speak, or to help through the process. The county, we have transportation specialists. They're full-time okay. employees right. that work for the county that work on different issues. And we do this all over the county. They really have the connection with the state and federal agencies. They deal with MDOT on a regular basis. We have our county road commission. We have a working relationship with the city of St. Clair. Um, we have lobbyists. The county has a full-time lobbying firm to help. So really when you look at the county and at all of its interactions with all the different agencies, it really makes probably the most sense to help facilitate um, some of the different possibilities, as I'd like to emphasize. There's no pre-drawn conclusions on what we're doing with M29 at this time. We really are, are in discussions uh, with it, and I'll let uh, the mayor, I guess, talk a little bit Your about Honor, that. Your uh, Honor, there's been, and you and I talked about this before we went on the air, there's been studies upon studies done since the uh, middle 1990s, probably even before that, uh, about M29, about the, the courtyard, about the Riverview Plaza, about the city in itself. So where are we at in, in all this process? Well, you're right. There were studies in 2000, 2005, 2008, 2010, and... I think now we're to the point where um, the economy is, is, is picking yep. up. Yep. We've got some good leadership at the county now. We have a good relationship with the county. And they have a lot of expertise and professionals that can really uh, add to this, this project. And, you know, people in St. Clair know that M29, downtown, the length of it or however you want to describe it, uh, it has some issues. People mm -hmm. drive a little too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic gets a little rough sometimes. The bridge opens and closes and the you know, May, June, July, August, mm -hmm. September, and that adds to some real challenges. it's tough to get across the street if <laughs> yeah, you want to go so, to Barber Park. Yeah, so, you know, uh, this is not a new idea. It's just, it's just a new approach to an, uh, an idea that's been around. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're cautiously moving forward, as, as Commissioner uh, Bohm says, and nothing has been decided. There's going to be meetings open to the public. Uh, their input is more than welcome. Uh, so, but, but, but yeah, you know, it's gonna, and, and a lot of it will depend on when we get to the point of what MDOT has to say as far as is the road safer, how we make it safer, what's acceptable with them. 
Um, at this point, the, the exciting thing about the courtyard development was that there was money that was set aside by a private foundation to make that happen. And that was really the impetus of a lot of the, why they didn't happen before. Was we would talk about things, but we never had the the cash to go along with it, right? Yeah, that courtyard. Uh, I was at those meetings, and I have to tell people you're really going to like what happens down there. And you've got the community foundation involved, and Randy Meyer, and uh, it's going to happen, as Jeff as just said. And and I really think it's going to be a, a big plus. And there's lots of comment uh, going on about other private uh, individuals who are, um, are interested in participating too. So it's it's not a closed deal. It's open to everybody, right? This is this is a we're in a, another phase or another chapter of the city of St. Clair. You know, in the '60s they went through urban renewal. Right. And you know, some people agreed with that, and some people just right. absolutely hated it. Right. And you can argue that point up and down all day long, but the reality is what we have. And some people don't like what we have, and so now you know. We can change some things, and St. Clair's a great place, but can we, can we make it a little bit better in some ways and do some things? I, I think, if, if nothing else, we should at least explore those possibilities. So, uh, tell me, uh, uh, Commissioner, what, uh, Jeff, what's the next step? Where, where are we at in the planning here? Well, we had a lengthy meeting um, the other night at City Hall to talk about a series of meetings that we, that we had. We've uh, engaged our state legislators, okay. uh, Phil Pavel and Dan Lowers both sit on transportation. Right, it's a state highway. So. State highway, and until recently, they've made some recent changes to some of the laws in MDOT, which have made it a little bit easier to do some of the changes. So some of the things that were perhaps in play four years ago uh, aren't necessarily in play today, and if anything, it's going to make, make it easier to do some of these possible changes. I think the biggest thing that I'd like to emphasize being that th there's going to be a series of meetings that we're going to have. The City Council on September 2nd is going to say yay or nay to move forward with these series of meetings. And what we would like to do, um, and we're going to have a little bit of discussion at that meeting as far as how to proceed, but the very um, first meeting that we're going to actually talk about this we want to set up some workshops before the okay. city council meeting. So this is going to take a handful of workshops for sure to talk through all these different issues. And they're, they're open to the public. And we had, it was a well-attended meeting the other night. There was at least 50, if not 70 people in the room. Um, a lot of people ask questions, though, that we mm -hmm. can't answer because we're not there yet. We are in the very beginning stages of this. Okay. Um, some of these meetings with MDOT that we've had have been, what can we do, what can't we do? Um, the, probably the neatest thing about this is I think what we're really looking at now is a restriping program of okay. M29. And if we do something and you don't like it, we can always go back to the old way. Okay. So when you talk about from four lanes down into three lanes, which essentially would include the center turn lane, would be part of the three lanes. And, you know, there's a lot of different ideas that, that will be going around that will be floated out there. If it doesn't work, we go back. This isn't in the years past. We've always talked about the million dollar redos, essentially, and that you know that comes with a heavy price tag. So MDOT's really lifted the you know the um, different options that you have a lot more walkability. Those types of things. We're not the only community going through this. Nope, I don't think nope. this is St. Clair. If you look at the four lane highway designs of years ago, they don't exist today. They're three lanes or five lanes. That's you know well noted. So that's why MDOT's willing to accept changes to some of the different things that they have. I'm the history of the four lanes, I was trying to discuss this the other day with some people. Uh, we believe that it was in the mid-60s when the road went from a two-lane road in St. Clair, North Riverside, to a four-lane road. And maybe it was tied together with, with urban renewal. I don't know that. But I know that there was some uh, fellow by the name of Bud Isles. Remember Bud Isles? Um, uh, we had some trees he had to have moved. and. Uh, you know, there's there anxiety and uh, apprehension about my trees and are they going to be okay? They turned out all right. But this kinds of conversation, my point being, have been going on forever. And it's going to continue, as you say. Sure. I remember urban renewal. I was a little kid, okay. obviously. Yeah. But my best friend lived across the street from me, Kevin Binkley. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they, my mom said, well, Kevin's moving to Lincoln Park. And I was like, why? Because they're going to tear his house down. For, what? <laughs> For urban renewal to build the Palmer Park Manor. Wow. And my feelings were hurt. Yeah. And I was mad at the city at the time. <laughs> yeah. Thought, what the heck are they doing tearing my best friend's house down? Right. So, I mean, I, I mean we're not tearing anybody's houses down. Right. <laughs> Let's say that straight. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's getting their house right. tore down. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah, we moved to here in '72. Urban renewal was, was done. Was, was done. done. Yeah. But I think if you look at, but then I always tell the story when I used to sled down Galane Hill when we were kids right. growing up. We used to sled in Galane Hill. And we would go into M29 multiple times. If you did that today, I guarantee you, you wouldn't make it two <laughs> times, and you'd get clipped by a car. So the whole traffic flow and everything today is a whole different deal. Some of the things that we do know for a fact. Average speed on M29 is 42 miles an hour. Really? MDOT comes out and they do their traffic studies. And the concern with that is how they dictate speeds on roads are determined by um, traffic studies. So mm -hmm. that's why I try to tell everybody, if you don't work on slowing it down and that speed gets increased, because that's how they do it, whether you like it or not, uh, 45 miles an hour turns into 55, mm -hmm. turns into mm -hmm. 60. Mm -hmm. Really, when you look at a, I think, and in, in I go to not just the, the, the speeds on M29, but creating an overall downtown business district in the connectivity into Palmer Park and mm -hmm. St. Clarin, Palmer Park, M29, um, Mall, those are all the focus of really what's, what's the destinations. destinations and you know with the Community Foundation which is going to be a major player in this community for a long, long, long time. These are the focus items and it's private money. We're, we're, you're very fortunate to have that in play and we're going to engage the public and there's going to be just a lot of discussions here. But make it no mistake, um, we're not going through this just because. I mean, there is, we are going to come out of these meetings with action items and continue to work, um, move forward with this. And uh, we don't, we're not looking for false starts because I know a lot of people have, you know, said we've tried this before and um, we've got all the right players at the table to make these things happen. Any final thoughts, sir, Your Honor? Well, just everybody, you know, be patient and understand that their voice will be heard and they'll have the opportunity to voice their opinion and council is always open to uh, people coming in and, you know, letting us know what they think and how they feel. Um, and I've had people already tell me how they feel and some is pro and some is con and that's normal stuff in, in you know, in, in any kind of political arena. Right. And certainly M29 and what to do with it is, you know, it's, it's a big part of this town. Yeah, a lot of series of meetings. First meeting is going to be, uh, well, September 2nd is just going to come in front of council to decide to move forward or not. Then the um, series of meetings will be two weeks after that, 15th, whatever, the 15th, September 15th. Going to have a one-hour workshop before that. And like I said, what we're trying to do is put a time frame together because there are different triggers that need to, to get accomplished that if we want to apply for funding, there are particular deadlines that need to be accomplished to get into the funding, uh, M, uh, MDOT funding um, stream to help with this restriping program, to essentially redo the restriping. Will We're there be some notification of what the workshops are going to be discussing? Or is there only one item in a discussion or in a, in a workshop? Or has that been determined? Well, yet? M29, we are going to engage our planning. As I said, we have transportation specialists that right. work for the county. We have our planning department. Right. Well, it's going to be a, a lot of planning exercises or activities that people have probably been through in the past some of us was elected to keep to keep some rhyme or reason and keep some you know keep focused on you know the intent of those okay. types of things but so, the first uh, workshop will be like the 15th so 15th assuming everything goes as we think it's going to go in the second okay yeah good all righty well gentlemen okay. i just wanted to get you in here and get yes. your thoughts and uh, try and bring the public up to date and and we'll sort of keep you on the loop here keep you on the string here and keep pulling you back in from time to time and uh, hopefully we, it'll be a successful project for another successful project for the city of St. Clair. Thank you. That's about it for this edition of the Roundtable. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Paul Dingaman.